Hi, hi, and welcome to LNA Does Odio Stuff. So we're back here with another tutorial in the series all about Ableton Live. Okay, we're all concentrating on Ableton Live 11, I know, but I still want to cover on some of the basic features that come also with Ableton Live 11. So today you will learn everything that there is to know about EQ8. Our favorite EQ friend in Ableton Live with the A Eight parametric filters. Okay, so let's get into this tutorial now. Oh, oh no. So let's first upload. EQ8. Oh, I'm in live 11. So we have the categories. So I need to go from here. Rubber EQ. There we go. And I'm going to solo the track as well. EQ8. First things first, what we see in front of us is the frequency display, which is this wonderful area here. So it's this black area with the grid here. So you can see that there is uh, these uh, gray things popping up. All I'm trying to do is have a little fun. That are called frequencies. Woo! So frequencies are detected, uh, shown here from 20 hertz all the way 100, 1K, 10K to 20 kilohertz. And why is that? It's because that's the uh, range of a human hearing. Whew, amazing. So on the left, you can see the volume. So we have zero, and then we, have, we can have plus six decibels, plus two decibels, minus six, minus 12, okay? Because when we are doing processing in EQ, we can increase and we can cut. There's a couple of ways to expand this screens because it's quite tiny here. So you might want to see a bit bigger. So one is here, this triangle, and we click here and it opens it up. All I'm trying to do. Otherwise, you can also just double click anywhere here and it opens it up. So what we can now see is not only a bigger, but we can also see this uh, dials here on the left lower corner. So what it shows is where my mouse is. It shows the hertz, so the frequency. It also so shows the corresponding note. So example, if I'm here is F sharp one. So that can be useful for you to detect a certain notes, example in harmonies or chords or whatever type of music structural stuff you are doing. Also it shows the decibels in there as well. So if I move around, it shows how many decibels. So minus 12 example there. When I expand the view, you can see that this changes uh, is a little bit as well, because when I expand it, these controls frequency gain and Q actually go on here on the different filters. So I will explain all this just in a moment. So we can also see a new control called analyze and this is to do with how we analyze this uh, frequency spectrum here. So plug is the number of sample analyzed uh, for each measurement. So how fast basically is it analy analyzing the frequencies and if you have it very high well, it will also increase the cpu load so be careful with that then we have refresh what's the frequency of the frequencies so how much time there will be time between measurements <laughs> and then we have a number of average uh, averages so this one example lower values using this is better to measure in peaks um, when higher amounts are showing as a slower rate of change. So that's why they are useful for uh, measuring things over time. Okay, so now we're going to be going here and we're going to be looking at the filters and filter bands. We can have all together eight parametric filters. Only four of them are now active. One, two, three, and four. If I activate the eight, I get another filter dot that shows here. So I can activate example all of them like this. The filter dots can be adjusted by dragging them up and down, or you can control the filter dots from these controls on the left. So when I have chosen one of these filters from the bottom here, example one, you can see it's selected. I can now control it with these controls on the left. So example frequency, which frequency is it concentrating on? The gain of the filter and Q is how narrow is the filter. It can be easier to show with this 
called bell. So like this, narrow or wide. And what wider it is, like this, it, it will of course then increase volume for higher amount of frequencies in this area where this will just concentrate example on one specific frequency. Also there's a shortcut for Q. So if I have this bell here and I press down Alt, I can then hold that and drag this view here and I can just change the Q by holding down Alt. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. I can change the filter types from this drop down menu. So there are quite many different ones. So we have a low cut, which is either minus 48 or minus 12. And what low cut does is also called high pass filter. So it passes everything from the high end. So it cuts low end to pass the high end. So that's what's also called. Then we have a lower shelf. And that means that we can have a shelf a bit like but it just kind of reduces a certain amount of frequencies in this area. Then we have a bell, and bell is one that I use a lot, especially in the mid frequencies, is just this, we can highlight things, we can cut. We have notch, goes all the way to the bottom from the middle. With the Q, we can narrow it like this. So it's a really good uh, tool to cut frequencies. So we have high shelf like this and it's the opposite of the low shelf which I showed in here. So of course we can also do it this way around or that way around. And we have a same here in high end. So we have we have minus 12 dp1 and then we have 48 dp1 which is a very steep slope. And this is called now low pass filtering. So we are passing the low and we are cutting the high. So let me show quickly these in action. Uh, example EQing a vocal. I'm gonna have a high pass filter firstly. All I'm trying to do is have a little fun. So you can see that there's not much going in a low end anyhow, but usually the way that I like using EQ is we go, 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 go. We slide it forward like this. And when we can hear it very distinctly, distinctly, then we just take a notch back like this. Okay, so let's do that. All I'm trying to do is have a little fun. Okay, we can hear really Nothing well. Serious, I ain't trying to settle down. So let's just add a little bit low end resonance on the bottom end of the vocal to create some body. And usually with vocals that is found between 230 and 400 ish. And what I usually like doing again is I go too much and then I just lower it down. All I'm trying to do is have a little fun. I lower the gain and maybe narrow the cue a little bit. Nothing serious. So that's already really nice. The muddiness area for vocals is around here. So around uh, 900. So I could just lower it from the mid range a little bit if I want. And I would just narrow the cue there. And then I could just go to the high end and either have a high shelf, but I want to be a bit more accurate. So I'm going to go with the bell and I just going to find usually between 4K, 4 kilohertz to 8 kilohertz is a sweet spot that really makes your vocal stand from the ground. All I'm trying to do from the mix, I mean, and the ground. All I'm trying to do is have a little fun. There's a nice sweet spot here in the 6 kilohertz, so I'm going to do the same. I'm just going to, I don't want to add too much. It's quite bright anyway, these vocals. All I'm trying to do is have a little fun. Nothing serious, I ain't trying to settle down. But again, these might change because depending of the mix, we have an audition mode here. And what that means is that I can actually solo certain uh, filters. All I'm trying to do is have a little fun. If I don't want to see the frequencies here while I mix, I just want to trust my ears, not my eyes, then I can just take off the uh, graphical display from here and I don't see the frequencies now. Oh! Is heavenly. Under there we have mode. So we have a stereo mode, 
uh, left right mode and mid side mode. Okay, so let's talk those through in here. Stereo mode, we have a stereo signal, we have left and right channel, as you can see here. I have here a couple of guitars and they are recorded so that they're only mostly on the left ear, example this one, and the other one is on the right. But I want to EQ them slightly different, so I'm going to add an EQ to the group, gr group track. And then what I can do with the uh, left and right is I can first go left channel, so that's this guitar here. I'm more concentrating on the first guitar, which is on the left, and I can, example, cut a little bit on the low end and you can see that there's this gray line that stays there and that's the right channel so we can do that next to 220 take a little bit from the mid and add a high shell and now I go here edit and I change that to right so now it's going to be the guitar on the right side uh, go into 360 add a high pass filter like that um, so they're not too similar on both of the ears of course i would need to listen to this same time now when i'm actually doing this so let's have a listen like you can hear this one now on the right end so very fun technique. So mid-side technique is a similar, but that's usually for recordings that are recorded with a uh, mid-side encoding, or it can be a useful thing for mixing or mastering. So let's say we have these guitars that are very panned to the left and right, and then we have a bass that is in the middle. So if I group these all together like this, and I put mid-side example here as a title, um, S, like that and I put an EQ there so the guitars are very left and right only they are not in the middle at all and then I have the bass completely only in the middle so what I could do is EQ the sides separately to the middle I activate the mid side here and first we are in the middle so first we are EQing the bass Click it and I turn it into S and that's the side. So that's the guitar, uh, guitars on the sides. Like that. Okay, so then we have a, a Adapt Q. So it will add actually more consistency into the whole EQ. So you can see example, if I take it off, widen a little bit like this. Okay, so what more? I add volume, the narrower the Q gets. Then we have a scale and you can see when I use the scale like this. So it will adjust the scale of all the filters that support volume. So what that means that example, um, low pass filter does not support volume, but the bell does. And then we have a global gain of the whole EQ. So when we are lifting, one of these filters up like this, the input volume that comes from here is being increased in our processing here. So when it goes out in here, it might peak. There we go. So if I increase them a lot, you can see that this volume is actually increasing a lot. So that's how we can actually go here and just reduce the gain. So we are gain staging a little bit while the signal is coming in and going out so that it should be about the similar level. There's actually a context menu also in EQ8. So if I right click example on the top bar here, we can see different options over sampling. So what it does is actually allows EQ8 to process the uh, signal in two times bigger sample rate. So example, it has like much more smoother uh, filter behavior in the higher frequencies. But you need to remember that of course it will cause again, much higher CPU rate. So make sure that you are okay with that. Also, if we are in uh, either left, right or mid side modes, we can also click on the context menu on the top bar and then we can copy the left to be right or copy the right to be left like this or there's option also to reset all gains.
like that. Ta-da! Hi! Hey, hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to this channel, please hit the bell icon, and please come here again because there will be a lot and lots and lots more content about Ableton Live as well as Ableton Live 11. And I'll see you here next Sunday. Okay, bye! Thank you.